the titration of I is astonishingly beautiful. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's time to go even deeper. The limit value lies right here. It's roughly 0 0.44, 0 0.36i. The three-branch trajectory is like a galaxy on your palm. And at the center of the galaxy is the infinite titration of i. To understand the titration of i, let's first understand a normal titration. First we have 2, then we have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. Next, 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2, 16, then it becomes over 65,000. After only 5 iterations, the number becomes so large that it is not possible for me to write it down. But we still have some boring titrations, like the titration of 1, because 1 to the power of 1 is 1, 1 to the power of 1 to the power of 1 is still 1, so the titration of 1 does not depend on the number of iterations. Another interesting example is the square root of 2. The titration of square root of 2 converges to 2. Here are the first few ones. It's monotonically increasing, but the speed is kind of slow. Let's use the good old trick to find the limit behavior. So the infinite titration of square root of 2 is x. Therefore, x equals square root of 2 to the power of x. So what's x? It's 2. The same trick can be applied to the infinite titration of i. So z is i to the power of z. We can rewrite i using the Euler's formula. So our expression becomes z equals e to the power of pi over 2 i z. Next, I'm going to rewrite z as a plus b i and substitute it into our expression. At this moment, it's very clear that we can split the real part and the imaginary part of this expression. We obtain two equations that nicely connect A and B. These equations enable us to perform numerical iterations to find the limit. So here's the code. This does give us the number, but it doesn't explain why we have three branches on our way to the center of the galaxy. We don't. It is an optical illusion created by our eyes. If you look closer and number them, you will see that there is only one trajectory. It's just that the neighboring points on this trajectory rotate roughly 120, maybe slightly more than 120 degrees, so our brains group them together. This is an ability that we developed through evolution. It is very helpful for us to detect danger in the nature. Now I'm going to focus on point 17 and 18, and we are going to figure out exactly why the angle difference with respect to our center of galaxy is roughly 120 degrees. First, let's call them Zn and Zn plus 1. It is easier to understand this as a vector on the complex plane, so I add a small arrow on top of the alphabet. Now let's calculate the vector with respect to the center of a galaxy. Let me call this blue vector un. Rn is its magnitude, theta n is the angle between it and the positive x-axis. Similarly, we can define un plus 1, just like un. So everything is in yellow for un plus 1. And our goal is to find the difference between theta n plus 1 and theta n. Let's use Rn and theta n to replace a n and b n in our recursion formula. So far, so good. Next, let's talk about the tangent of theta n plus 1. We can substitute b n plus 1 and a n plus 1. We have theta n plus 1 on the left hand side and theta n on the right hand side. Let's simplify it. First, let's take tangent on both sides, then we send Rn to 0. We can do this because we observe that when Rn goes to 0, the theta difference seems maintained. I'm also using f and g to represent the numerator and the denominator to avoid overcrowding the screen. Next, I'm going to use the Maclaurin expansion to expand f Rn theta n when Rn is 0. You can do it by hand or use libraries like SimPy. This is what I got. I can group these two terms together as a sign of the two angles sum. 
how to leave something to my viewers to work on. So can you try the denominator G? This is what I got. Just look how close those numbers are. And the right hand side, you can basically write it as tangent theta n plus roughly 0 0.88. This also explains that why we have a nice sparrow rather than three straight lines. And this concludes our investigation of this beautiful limit. I would like to thank Chandla Bing for the original post on Reddit that enlightens me to create this video. Thank you for watching. It is my pleasure to share the beauty of mathematics with you.